everybody. 大家好 I welcome you to J Palace Yamingo. My name is Yaya. This famous piece of artwork has been regaled through the ages, known as the Pride of China. What is it? So let's get started. Qingming Shanghe Tu, also known as Along the River during the Qingming Festival in English, is a very famous piece of art. It is perhaps the most renowned piece among all Chinese paintings, and is also called China's Mona Lisa. Yeah, it's that famous. Medium of the painting is ink and color on silk. It is also a panoramic painting in hand scroll format. The scroll is 25.5 centimeters tall and 525 centimeters long, so about 10 inches tall and 207 inches long. So that means that completely unrolled, this painting is around 17 feet long. The scroll story is told through perspective and can create moments of tension and suspense that entices the reader to keep on looking. You would only unroll sections that's an arm's length at a time, starting from the right and progress to the left. Pace is determined by the viewer. Think of the scroll format like an ancient comic book or manga. It's supposed to tell a story the more you unroll. While we see them fully stretched out in museums, they are originally meant to be held by the viewer. This artwork is now housed in the Palace Museum in Beijing. Though, if you go to the museum, what you see being displayed is actually a replica, as the original is now kept in a temperature and humidity-controlled vault. Qingming Shanghe Tu was painted during the Northern Song Dynasty around 1117 CE by the artist Zhang Ziduan. Not much is known about the artist, but we do know that he was an imperial painter and would paint commissions for the emperor. He is only known for two works: Qingming Shanghe Tu and Games in the Jingming Pool. Zhang Ziduan was instrumental in the Chinese landscape art style, the Shan Shui style. The painting's name was given by the emperor that it was presented to, Emperor Hui Zong of Song. Upon seeing the painting, he acknowledged the techniques and expressive force of Zhang Ziduan. The emperor approved it with his seal and gave the painting its iconic name. Qingming Shanghe Tu. The painting is segmented into three parts. Looking at the painting, you see a depiction of daily life during the Northern Song Dynasty. It shows different businesses like tavern, tea houses, stores, and so on. We are looking at the prosperity of the dynasty, especially the bustling activities of the citizens prepping for the Qingming Festival. There are about 814 humans, 28 boats, 60 animals, 30 buildings, 20 vehicles, nine sedan chairs, and 170 trees featured in the painting. So this painting can be seen in a way kind of like medieval propaganda. It showcases the peace of the country after its reunification. With the formation of the Northern Song Dynasty in 960 CE, we start with the right side of the scroll. Here we see that it's early morning in the rural area, right outside the city. Fields of crops, trees, and countryside citizens cover this section of the scroll. Most of the figures here are predominantly farmers, goat herders, and pig herders. The path of the countryside eventually broadens and joins into the road leading into the city. First half of the middle section features all kinds of different businesses: vendors selling wine, grain, goods, weapons, lanterns, and so on line the streets. Here we can also see the river widen as boats line the shore. It appears to be a booming economy. As we see business of all kinds, rows of stores extend until it reaches the middle of the painting. 
right in the middle, we have the focus and climax of the whole painting. This is the famous boat and bridge scene that everyone knows and loves. What's featured is the Hong Chiao, also called the Rainbow Bridge. It's teeming with people going about their business. Rows of stands also line one side of the bridge. There's a high level of tension in the scene, as we see people clambering to the other side of the bridge and a ship approaching at an awkward angle. The ship's mast isn't fully lowered because it misjudged the distance and is at risk of crashing into the bridge. Crowds on the bridge and along the river shore are gesturing and shouting at the ship. One citizen on the bridge has lowered a rope to the outstretched hands of the crew members below. After this scene, we move on to the second half of the middle section as it continues with more stores and vendors. Here we see the urban life around the city gate as well as foreign trade. People are loading cargo onto ships, more shops and a tax office can be seen in this area. The large gates of the city loom over its people as we see camels crossing through, indicating trade with foreign land. Toward the end of the painting on the leftmost side, we finish off with more varying buildings in a grandeur style. Mansions, hotels, restaurants, temples, and so on. Qingming Shanghe Tu is seen as a symbol of national reunification. Prior to the Song Dynasty, we had the Five Dynasties and Ten Kingdoms period. It was a span of disunion and conflict. This painting is meant to show a time of prosperity of the land coming back together again which is why it was such a huge deal when it was exhibited in Hong Kong in 2007, 10 years after its return from the UK back to China. Which city is the painting supposed to depict? Scholars have agreed that the painted city is supposed to be Bianjing, which is modern-day Kaifeng, the capital of the Northern Song Dynasty. Although this is just a speculation, we aren't actually exactly sure that this is Bianjing, and current studies may prove otherwise. Perhaps the most copied piece of work in Chinese history. Many dynasties have made countless versions of this work, some as early as the 14th century, and many of those copies have survived. Probably the most famous copy is the one from the Qing Dynasty, which was commissioned by Emperor Yongzhen. It took five court painters to paint and was finished after his death. It was presented to Emperor Qianlong in 1736 CE. The Qing Dynasty copy was changed in order to be more eye-pleasing and marketable. It now resides in the National Palace Museum in Taiwan. While every variation are just copies of the original, they are all still considered to be national treasures. Although the title has been translated to Along the River During the Qiming Festival, and scholars have speculated that it depicts a scene of citizens busy celebrating the Qiming Festival, but that's actually not for sure. Over the years, there have been many debates over the meaning of the name. There are three possibilities. First is, of course, the Qiming Festival as first thought. Second is, instead of the Qiming Festival, it refers to the Qiming Solar Term. Lastly, that it doesn't refer to either, but instead is named for the scene that it is portraying. Qing Ming literally translates to clean and bright. Since this painting is supposed to be one of prosperity, the name could be referring to the order and peace of the citizens. If you look at the other copies, the scene in those are definitely not the Qing festival. Main evidence is the Ming Dynasty version as it has a wedding procession. You wouldn't have a wedding during the Qiming festival since it's meant for grave cleaning, indicating that it's not the festival, but sometime else. 
As with many famous paintings, Qinming Shanghe Tu has been owned by many owners, lost, and stolen several times throughout history. Last time was by Pu Yi, the last emperor of the Qing dynasty. It was his favorite painting and he took it with him when he was forced to leave. However, he also left and lost it in Manchuria. 21 years later, in 1945, it was bought back and housed in the Palace Museum. If you guys want to see something that's really cool, check out World Expo 2010's animated version. Using computer technology, it's blown up 30 times its size, and you can see figures and objects moving through the scene, as well as cycling through the day and night. There is more to this painting than meets the eye, but I will get to that in a future video, so keep an eye out. I have a Teespring if you'd like to support the channel. I have a lot of super cute designs that I'm really proud of, so please check it out if you can. Link is in the description below. So what do you guys think? Have you seen different versions of this painting before? Leave a comment down below because I would like to know. Please leave a comment if you can. It really does help out small channels like mine. You can also let me know what topics you would like to see me cover in the future. If you enjoyed this video, please give it a like and subscribe to J Palace Yamiko. I would very much appreciate it. And until next time, 再见了!